how many here has ever been in a relationship of any kind? Okay, so the majority of us have. Okay. Um, and what do your parents think about you guys not being in relationships? Well, Dad thinks we're gay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? Oh <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> and your mom just wants grandbabies, right? <laughs> That's what moms she always want. She wants grandbabies, but she doesn't want us to ever be in a relationship. So Maybe how does no. oh adopt okay oh, okay <laughs> it, it, <laughs> she don't want that no oh. no buddy with all with all the joking that we had with um Amy oh my gosh come on okay me and Ben were teasing about Gunther the other day he's uh he, Ben's imaginary son it's the one that was at the house for me <laughs> that's too funny she got real riled. Don't tell that story because for fifth uh, fifth uh, EMs the part, EM party we're gonna have funniest story. Oh. Uh, okay. Um, have you ever had a first love? It doesn't have to be a first relationship, just a first love. You saw somebody on the TV or you met somebody and you're just like, oh my gosh, I love this person. No? Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay, Mr. Depression. <laughs> um, let, and now let's follow up that up with this. How many actually got with their first love? And how did that work for you? Not well? Last just two and a half years. Yeah? And it kind of went down the crap drain? Yeah. It just... Um, well, we're still married. We're separated. Yeah. I'm currently with them. Oh. <laughs> Awkward. Just kidding. Just kidding. Usually what happens with first loves is um, bad things, bad. eventually. Eventually. No, bad things. No. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> okay. Well. Um, so... <laughs> let's have a little discussion throughout the course of this. Is staying single okay? Yes. Sure. Why? <laughs> so you can devote more to ministry. Okay. <gasps> to go after, to seek God more. Okay. Nicole, what do you think? I think that way, I, I agree with Zach, that way you can focus more on God instead of the other person. Okay. Well, that way you don't have someone hounding you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Better live on the corner roof. <laughs> oh, my God. Ben, you got anything to add to this? <laughs> well, I was instructed to tell all of you that it's a sin to stay single and you need to pop out babies. I'm just kidding. Um, one of the things that caused, um, that caused the belief in, in Christianity that you had to get married you had to have have babies, and you had to really go for it. Were really um, a few different uh, passages, and we're only going to really look at one of them. Um, one was from Genesis, where it says, uh, "Go forth and multiply, be fruitful in the earth." Um, but long story short, that doesn't really mean that Christians have to produce children. I mean, long story short. Uh, I don't really have time to get into that. But the one that we are going to very briefly get into is the one in First Timothy, um, chapter two, verse five. Um, I'm sorry, chapter two, verse fifteen. Um, and it says this: Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. Which got the idea going that somehow bearing children, excuse me, was every woman's responsibility. That they had to do this thing, and and some people took it to the extreme of saying, you actually maybe weren't even saved unless you followed through with your marital role. Um, long, I don't really have time to get into all the different things that that was going on at the time of this letter. But long story short, what he's saying is, you can have children, and it's not going to affect your salvation. What is going to affect your salvation is whether you're staying, um, continuing in faith and love and holiness with self-control. It's a little bit. I know in, in different translations it reads differently, and it's a little bit hard to understand what he's saying there, but that's the sum, the sum of it. Um, 
Also, marriage is not going to fix a lusting problem. If you look at pornography or if you sleep around or whatever, it's not going to suddenly go away just because you got married. You're going to have to either learn to stop sleeping around or to stop playing in porn or whatever it is. Um, to Does that make sense? To, that, that's how the situation will be resolved. Um, marriage isn't going to resolve it. And then um, the thing is that people times oftentimes just blow over. Oh, well, if you're married, it's a good thing. If you have a wife, it's a good thing, you know, and it'll it'll uh, um, it'll help you. Well, yes, that, that that's true. However, this is true. Marriage brings unique problems, and the same as sing, uh, the same as staying single brings other problems. Mm -hmm. If you stay single, you can have some problems. If you are married, you can have other problems. It's just which set of problems would you like to have? When you're married, you have to worry about your spouse's feelings. Mm -hmm. When you're not, you don't. When you're married, you have to worry about putting your shoes wherever the, your spouse wants them. When you're not, you don't. <laughs> See what I mean? But with that being said, when you're not married, you have to worry about things like loneliness or, or maybe um, – once well, once again, um, you have to refrain from sexual intimacy. That's a hard thing to do. you know. But um, – they both have their pros and their cons. It really is is your personality type. First um, Corinthians seven. I'm not going to turn there, but if you'd like more on this, you can read through there. Um, and and Paul talks repeatedly about, um, you know, if if you've been widowed, stay as you are. You know, he encourages some things, and and um, some things are a direct command from the Lord. Just read through there, and you'll kind of get an idea for it. Um, but yeah. So, any questions on staying single? Kind of a simple thing. You you can, and in fact, they, I would have brought up First Corinthians more, but they already kind of hit on it. First Corinthians seven says about how if you're married, you're gonna have have to have problems with, um, well, with being concerned about earthly things. But if you're not, you'll be freed of that. And so Paul says, I wish all of you were like I am, not married. But you know, he realizes that for for the sake of uh, sexual uh, passions, that not everybody can do that. So, no questions on that. Okay. Um. But one thing that I thought was important is if you are someone who's prone to relationships, you're always trying to get into relationships. Listen to your parents on whether they think you should get in a, in a relationship, and if so, what kind of relationship. And if you're the kind of person who doesn't get into relationships, like just listen to your parents on what they say. You don't have to. You don't have to do what they say. You know what I mean? You don't have to get with someone if they tell you to get with someone, or not get with someone if they don't tell you. You know, does that make sense? You don't have to do that. But just hear them out, and then make your decision. But I mean, some of you who have already decided not to do that, you're already at the age probably where you're going to probably play it through now at this point. I mean, you're almost 30, and you're mid 20s. Chances of you guys changing your opinions now, I mean, it could happen, I guess. I mean, happened with Joey, so it could happen. But you know. Well, come on now. So, um, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. <laughs> um, what is love? <laughs> Mike is like, hee hee hee, that's funny, Dad. Huh? <laughs> what is love? That's a passage. In the Bible. That's not love. That's a passage. Don't just quote a verse. What does that mean? Yeah. Well, if you think that there's multiple types of love, then tell us what you're thinking. What do I mean, Ben? What do you think? You guys all, all got quiet on this one. There's four types of love. Four types. Okay, one. Um, parent to a child. Okay, two. Romantic love. Okay, three. Um, godly love. The like love example. That, like God's love to us. Okay, all right, four. And like friendship love. Okay, and so what is the common thing in all of those things? What is it? 
lot of it is cutting others before yourself. Okay. So kind of a thing of service. Okay. Sure, that's fine. Anybody else have anything to add to that? I mean... Actually, I think there's a fifth type. Okay. Sibling love. Okay. Well, can you really love a brother or sister? Yes. To a degree. Gonna have to disagree with you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, Nicole. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> I notice my group's getting a little smaller with every every second that goes by. <laughs> you should have picked a different topic. I should have picked a different topic because now Ben's leaving like too. Like NCIS. <laughs> like and oh my gosh, then I would have had the same four guys every week. <laughs> um, so did you guys have anything else to say about what is love? Okay. No. Grace. Um, well, there's also the whole. Oh my gosh, I'm so in love with you. And then five minutes later, oh, I hate that okay. person so much. <laughs> the feeling of love. The illusion of love. I think that there's really only one type of love. Love that a man has for a beef taco. Not fish tacos. <laughs> because we all know that the fish tacos are just gross. But a beef taco. Okay. All right. Let's yeah. eat that. Right? Let's eat that. The only real question in all of this is hard or soft shell. Oh. It just depends on the mood. We got a mood guy here. I'm an always soft. What? Oh, okay. Uh, What's the verdict, <laughs> guys? The, oh, oh, we got two depends on the days, Gracie. Ben? Nine times out of ten but, soft. Now there's the kind yeah. of guy that I don't want to hang but out with. Soft or flower. Soft oh, corn or flower. flower. Oh, I'm going to say... Ooh. Ooh, corn. Corn. Wait. Corn. Uh, corn. Really? Flour. Oh, I don't know. We're going to have to have a taco eating contest. All of us. All tacos. All night. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Sorry. Oh, well, we're all apologetic now. <laughs> so anybody else? Well, it was my mother-in-law. I'm totally kidding. Totally kidding. It's, totally kidding. it's yeah. fine. So what is love? Butterflies in the stomach. Okay. All right. Uh, can't wait to see that person. Do people have these feelings for someone? Yeah. Oh. Uh, can't focus on work. Has anybody else here experienced that? Because yeah, I, I think Zach's the only one who had this. <laughs> Did you try taking, like, what's that pink stuff that helps with the blow down? <laughs> Did you ever try that? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> That person is on your mind <laughs> all the time. <coughs> so, <coughs> I I, <coughs> I had this on an earlier lesson, and I thought I'd bring it back up because I think it's relevant. Mm -hmm. About this um, saying something but not really showing it with your actions. And, I mean, I'm sure we've all, all been in that kind of thing where, where somebody tells us that they love us maybe, but they just – maybe you don't really feel loved by that person at that time. You know what I mean? It's it's contagious. I want to laugh now. I don't even know what we're laughing about. Um, I think love foremost is action. Foremost. Because feelings... Has anybody felt really antsy when they had needed to go poop? You know what I mean? Where you get that antsy feeling. But then you go poop and guess what? You don't feel antsy anymore, right? Right? So love has to be more than just feelings. I'm not saying feelings are not love. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that I think that sometimes we overlook doing the right thing because we feel something. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Kind of. The grace you brought up First Corinthians thir uh, 13. I'll go ahead and read there. And if you look through this, it really doesn't have much to do with whether you feel like it or not. It's doing the right thing. Yeah. Love is patient and kind. Already, we don't have any mention of, 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 of necessarily feeling like doing it. You're going to be married to somebody and not really feel like showing them love. You're going to be dating somebody and not really feel like showing them love. Like, that's just a fact of life. Um, love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist in its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrong, wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. 
Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And, I mean, here he's talking about the way inter, um, basically church relation, church relations, you know, as, especially as it applies to gifts of tongues, I mean, gifts of prophecy, gifts of the spirit, and, and stuff like that. But still, it, 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 it applies more broadly, too. Um, but definitely, um, love is, is, the basis of all love should be action. Um, but there's something else. Love with love, feelings can come and go. Um, you know, I I I had my well, I think yeah, my very first crush. You're never gonna believe who it was. Um, what was her name? Um, oh, what was her name? She was on the movie about the Stuart, Stuart Little, um, the mouse. What? I haven't seen that movie on. Ten years. Yeah. Okay. Well, the mom on Stuart Little. What was her name? Um. Dad Gum. Ben, can you look that up on your phone? Oh my gosh, that's gonna kill me. Chuck. Oh my gosh. No. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, whenever you leave here, go look up Stuart Little, and it's the mom on that. Okay. Okay. And. uh I mean, I got over it, but then, like, I had my first actual person crush, and then I got over that one, and then I, I had another crush, and then I, I dated that crush, and then, terrible idea. See what I mean? Y feelings come and go. Does that make sense? Like, they, they just come and go. Um, or if you've been married, you know that sometimes you wake up and you're like, I hate this person. Shut up. I hate your face. I hate your voice. Just stop talking. <laughs> come on. Everybody's had that day. <laughs> As Gracie was, uh, walks off, hey, hey, I remember at least one time when she hated me, she was all, you did this to me! Oh! That's such a giving bird. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I got the same thing. Um, so love is not necessarily based on attraction. Why that's important is because a lot of times we get feeling for someone because they're attractive to us. That's not love. That's That's attraction. Okay, which is why in a little bit I'm going to say this, it is impossible to fall in and out of love. Because love is something, a choice that you make to commit to somebody. See what I mean? It's something that, that, that you invest in someone. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. But whereas the, the love that Hollywood sh shows to people isn't that. It, it's something that, that kind of hops around. Yeah. If it feels like it, it will. But as, as soon as some, somebody does something against you, oh, it's okay to get them back. Well, that's not love. Oh, well, my spouse cheated on me, so I'm not going to work on this marriage anymore. That's just it. See what I mean? Where's, where's the self-sacrifice in that? See what I mean? So, um, however, you should probably be attracted to the person that you choose to marry. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> just throwing that out there. Your relationship should not be based on attraction. However, <laughs> not a good idea to marry someone you're not attracted to. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so sex can have something to do with love. I know a lot of times people make it out as, in, as though you know sex is the is the number one thing about about love. That that is we made love, right? That's the way it, it always, it's always portrayed. But sex is not necessarily a sign of love. Sex can be just that, sex. You know what I mean? A lot of people make a hobby of sleeping around with people. That doesn't mean that they love every person that they have sex with. That just means that they have a habit of of sleeping around. See what I mean? So sex can have something to do with love. Um, and just throwing this out there, we talked about um, having a biblical value of, uh, of yourself, having, you know, seeing yourself as God sees you, you know, with that value there. And um, this kind of relates between that and this, so I put it here. If you see yourself as inadequate, you will see God as inadequate. See what I mean? If you see yourself as unforgivable, your view of God will diminish too. See what I mean? Does that kind of make sense? If you see yourself as a mistake, you will see eventually that God, who made you, would be the one who made the mistake, huh? See what I mean? It, it's a, it's, it has a habit of snowballing. You might not think it in, at first, but eventually you'll probably get there. Um, and obviously your, your relationship will suffer. A lot of people that I see sleep around don't do it because they're necessarily whores. They do it because... They have a very low, low sense of worth. They don't see themselves as, self as, as anyone of importance. So they sleep around. 
See what I mean? It's easier to say, oh, they're just a whore because, I mean, that's more convenient for us. But in all truth, it's rarely that black and white. Usually there's something going on there. I swear I didn't do it. <laughs> you were laughing with me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what does sexual in intimacy outside of marriage matter? Why does it matter if you have sex out of marriage? Very good, yes. Anything else? Oh, come on, guys. I know you got some more. Okay. Very good point. Be safe. <laughs> you may end up breaking up with that person. This is very true. This is very true. Very true. Very true. Very true. Well, I think you guys are, are really kind of got it. For, there, there's, there's no commitment. So like Nicole said, you guys could break up at any moment, and whatever you had will be forever lost. In fact, a lot of guys make a hobby of that. They'll sleep around with a girl until she gets pregnant or until they just like, eh, whatever, and they just kind of go to the getting next. Too clingy or something. Right, right. A girl getting clingy after you have sex with her, say it isn't so. <laughs> what a guy way of thinking. Um, it is, it is something that the Bible says not to do. I mean, there is that. You know, it, if morality is something you're concerned about. I mean, if you don't care about morality, then this point isn't going to mean that much to you. Um, and sin always leads to more sin. I mean, it's kind of already been said, you know, if you have sex with one person, you're more likely to keep having sex outside of that commitment. Um... Sexual intimacy leaves a part of you with that person, exactly what Ben just said. I mean, literally, exactly what he just said. Um... If you sleep around, you're literally giving away pieces of yourself, and it'll be very, very hard to have anything left to give by the time you find someone that you're willing to commit to. Um, it affects your attitude and behavior. The, the, the more you sleep around, the more you're, you, you... First off, and this also goes for, for looking at porn, too. You kind of see maybe others as maybe inferior to you, or you get kind of a built-up complex, like a big ego. You know, like, I'm, I'm worthy of this or whatever. Or it can go to the other extreme where you think that you're just lower than dirt. It can go to either extreme. Um, you maybe are, are a little more irritable. Um, well, you guys see what I'm saying. Um, Chuck brought this one up. Um, you are more prone to sexual diseases. I mean, surprising enough, you can't just suddenly contract an STD from not having sex. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> But, you know, when I see all these things about how to how to make sure you don't get, um, get was that, um, not HIV, but when that progresses to H AIDS, H how, to, how to not get AIDS, you know, make sure you do this and this. And I'm just thinking, uh, don't have sex with a bunch of people, and that'll get rid of that problem. <laughs> or if you have AIDS, don't have sex with people. <laughs> problem solved. Like, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um... Later relationships problems. Later relationship problems. People don't realize this, but when you have sex with someone, regardless of whether you get with the person that you're having sex with or if it's someone completely different, there will be problems that come up. She will be insecure first off because your relationship will be based off of sex. Now, we all know that women aren't as, let's just say, into sex as guys are. They, maybe they are. Okay, to some to different degrees, different women are, are into sex to different degrees, but women tend to tend to give sex as a means of getting something back. That something being love or attention or affection that they that they feel like maybe they need to validate themselves. Okay, now what guys do is 
<laughs> it's kind of hard to summate this in so few words. But guys kind of have a way of of getting out of sex their 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 charges. You know what I mean? And so they will be very short tempered with the woman, and um, you know if they don't if she doesn't give them sex at that exact moment, you know it's it's gonna cause a huge tiff thing. Um, and uh, uh, guys have the tendency of going to extremes. Either they're completely sexed up, they want to look at porn, have sex with women. I mean, they just go through the list of let's see how much uh, how much I can get in one one day. Um, to the other extreme, we're just withdrawing from people, and uh, men tend to distance themselves emotionally from women if they've if they've been exposed to uh, sexually sexual immoral sexually immoral activity, such as pornography or uh, uh, sleeping around and that kind of stuff. So, whereas women tend to be more insecure in their relationship because of it, men t tend to be go to more extremes, maybe even to the point of being um, aggressive or threatening or manipulative but either way however it'll play out eventually you're gonna find a, a very um, hard situation arises in your in the relationship that, that, that's harder to work through when your relationship is founded on sexual intimacy rather than um, spiritual intimacy Does that make sense kind of um, so <clears throat> and also uh, sex will become an issue of power. When you get married, it'll it'll be a thing where the woman will withhold it to get you to do something, or you will withhold it to keep from your woman being attached to you or connecting with you. Um, and other areas of of common uh, controversy between married people is finances and there's three common things: sex, finances, and what's the third thing? Regardless, uh, sex will eventually become an issue of power if you have, if you have slept around before the marriage. Um, um, also, it hardens your heart. Just some, some other things I wrote down in my notes. Um, it, it'll harden your heart, spiritually speaking. Um, it'll be a bad witness to other people, obviously. Um, and oh yeah, and one other thing I wanted to mention because well, the young kids of this generation are kind of trying to find loopholes to we didn't really have sex. So I thought I'd define that. Um, sex is any time when um, a sexual experience is encountered. Now, you can take that to the extreme of saying kissing, or you can take it to the mellowness of saying any risque kissing and touching. However you want to take that. Different people have different levels. I did find that it, it was terrible for me having kissed someone before my spouse, um, just because... I don't know, it, it, felt, it kind of felt awkward, and it kind of felt like, I don't know, I just, it kind of felt gross, you know what I mean? Like, ew, that person spit, and this person, yeah, you know what I mean? It just feels gross. I don't know. Maybe just me. Maybe other people don't have problems with it. I kind of did. I wish that I hadn't kissed kiss someone before marriage, but I'll let you guys decide for yourselves. Um, so that includes anal sex is still sex. Oral sex is still sex. Any any kind of things with your hands, still sex, like masturbation, still considered sexual activity. Like, for instance, pornography is still considered sexual activity. Um, and all those things are meant for a marriage. So then people obviously ask me, so what is the rules for sex within marriage? As long as you and your spouse are consensual about it and it doesn't dishonor God. Like, obviously, having a threesome would probably dishonor God. Watching pornography while you're having sex is probably going to dishonor God. See what I mean? But other than that, see what I mean? That as long as it doesn't dishonor God's more God's law of morality, it's kind of open to whatever you and your spouse agree on. So, um, what is sex for? What's its purpose? This is kind of a trick question. Make babies. To make babies, procreation, very good. Anything else? Okay. Very good. Was that what you were going to say? Okay. Did I see Nicole? Did I see you thinking? Okay. For pleasure. Okay. Very good. Now, don't don't tell people that about 200 years ago. 
<laughs> Actually, a hundred years ago, and I don't know. It's just, it's just in some places still today. Take away temptation. That's actually a good point. Could you elaborate a little bit? I know what you're saying, but I want to make sure that everybody here kind of is on board with you. Um, the spouse is um, prone to look at porn or other people while the, the uh, couple are regularly having sex. Grace is having sex. <laughs> then, they're, then they're more likely to stay involved in their relationship than go and look at someone else. So are you saying that every time that a spouse... Messes up. It's it's others. It's the spouse's fault for not being sexually. Um. No, but it could be if the other spouse is being withholding. Now, I do want to hop on this. If your spouse sa says this line, if you would have had sex with me, this would never have happened. Or a a, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever the situation is. If if your significant other says that, says something like that, there's a problem. There's a problem. That's called manipulation. Mm -hmm. That's where there's someone in the relationship who's trying to take something by force to making you feel guilty for it. That's not what sex is about. Sex is supposed to be a mutually consenting and mutually beneficial thing where both parties are enjoying the process. Mm -hmm. That's what sex is supposed to be like. So if there's a manipulation going on and you are, you are feeling violated in the act of sex, that's called soft rape. Just so that we're all on the same border here. Just throwing it out there. Um, if you are dating someone who does that, do not marry them. Break it off right there. That's the end of the situation. Because that manipulation will go further and will, will end up with him either abusing you or children or, or your future children. Or, um, I mean, just all kinds of different things. And that's a conversation for in, in front of the day. But with that being said, plow ahead. What is sex for? Procreation? Relaxation? Emancipation? No, I'm just kidding. I was just thinking of other words that had I O N at the end. Castration. <laughs> wow! 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 Um, pleasure or enjoyment? Um, intimacy? Conflict resolution? And expression? You're expressing yourself to your partner, and they're expressing expressing themselves to you. Hopefully, unless it's kind of a one-way thing. Have you seen that one cartoon with the stick stick man, uh, stick figures? Yes, go ahead. Roll around on me a lot. Oh, wow, whatever gets this thing going along. <laughs> it's not supposed to be like that. Um, conflict resolution, though, um, sex has a powerful way of just calming moods and bringing two people back together. Um, yeah. A lot of times um, it's kind of a snowball effect in marriage. They stop having sex and they start fighting more, and they just kind of both kind of build each other up more. They're not having sex, so they fight more, and they're fighting more, so they're not having sex. See what I mean? So it's kind of like a, a snowball effect. Um, yeah. So. But I think you guys already had a pretty good idea of that. Um, what should you look for in a mate? Or a spouse? Somebody you can connect with. Okay. What, what, what defines them as someone you can connect with? Um, things that you have in common with. Okay. That you like to share, you know, hang out with, with each other. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Or anything else, if you had something else? Um, sure. what she did for an Um, well, <coughs> speaking Christian-wise, that they seek God first in everything. Okay. Good I think point. It's, it's a lot harder once you get married to uh, have your spouse, um, you know, change them into being a Christian, trying to save them, than it would be just missionary married. dating. <laughs> yeah, missionary dating or marrying is terrible. Oh my gosh, how many teenagers? Oh, I'm I'm missionary dating. I'm I'm gonna lead them to Jesus. <laughs> Next year you run into them in they're Walmart pregnant. and they're pregnant. It's like what happened there? I guess his Satan was stronger than my Jesus. <laughs> Just saying. Like, what the heck does that mean? I've never heard of that before. Oh. Missionary dating. If you grew up in the church, uh -huh. you know it. Yeah. <laughs> or if you went to Sagu for college. Yeah. God told me to be with this person. 
That person, you had just had premarital sex with that person. I guess God wasn't anticipating that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, okay. That's something. What should you look for in a mate? Well, they should be single. <laughs> <laughs> yes! First of all, yeah. I think so. <laughs> and you should probably be single too, right? Probably. Well, there you go. Okay, well, there's something. Wow. They should be legal. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't get you shouldn't get arrested for uh, for being with them. That that's probably a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are terrible. I love you. <laughs> Michael's like, I'm not putting this one on YouTube. <laughs> what else should you look for in a mate? They need to be faithful. Mm, yeah. Yeah, faithful. Uh huh. A certain prophet of the Old Testament would agree with you on that one. <laughs> it's a little bit of anger. Okay. Hot tempered, it means that there may be abuse later on. Mm. 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 I've seen a lot of girls date guys. Oh, he he's just in a bad mood today. It's just been a rough day for him. Mm. Oh. Okay. When you have to excuse your, your boyfriend slash girlfriend's behavior, now worth excusing. Just saying. This comes back to having value for yourself and having foresight to see that you're trapping yourself in a very bad situation. See how they treat a bad waitress, and that's probably how they're going to treat you later Buddy, in marriage. That is actually wow. in this. Really? Can you believe that? It says, oh, yeah. watch how they treat waiters and parents. Yeah. Buddy. Um, before I go for it, I do want to, I do want to mention something. Look where you get your spouse from. I had this idea growing up that the place to find a mate was in church. <clears throat> I dated two girls in that youth group. Terrible things. Terrible things. Do uh, not date people from church. Uh, uh, yeah. What? What? I found, yep. Yeah, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, this is what's going to eventually happen if you date people from church. Church conflict. Or somebody's leaving the church. Usually, what happens, and it's usually usually it is isn't a simple situation. Usually, usually it involves the pastor and something. I'm not talking about anybody else. I'm talking about me here. I, I know I've experienced this firsthand. I, I know what's involved with this. <laughs> uh, it also will hurt your friendships too. Um, so we were talking about, remember we were talking about predestination? You guys remember that? And I made the, made the, and I was talking, excuse me, I was talking about the way that predestination really applies mostly in matters of salvation. And to a lesser degree in God guiding you in, in, in your life and, and, and bringing you to certain things. Does that make sense? But not necessarily that he, he, predestines you to, to make certain choices or to do certain things or to get with certain people. And so somewhere along the line of this idea of predestination and whether people have free will or not, somewhere in there, people got this idea that there is a one for you. This is the, that one person, your soulmate. I don't know where this got going originally. It's, it's kind of sprinkled in a lot of different things and a lot of different cults and a lot of different worldviews and a lot of different – denominations, but it's hard to really pinpoint where the heck it came from. I'm not sure. But I just want to kind of touch on this. There is no one. So if you're looking for that one, look no further. <laughs> All right? Gracie, I did, it's not like God, God came down in a dream and said, marry this woman. I chose to marry her. It was a decision. Go ahead. Do, 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 do you know where the idea of the soulmate originated? No, I have no idea. Um, with Greek mythology, it was believed that the gods um, separated the people into two different beings yeah. because of their pride. 
and that they were in, in life they had to go about trying to find the other half of their soul and reconnect with it. What oh. if they put that other half of the soul in like Africa and you were in like the Middle East? What would you do? <laughs> Hop on a boat. Hop on a boat, but you don't yeah. know where that boat's going. Oh man, that's a terrible thing. <laughs> is that true? That is a terrible thing. Wow, that is a terrible thing. <laughs> Jeez, that's a that's a terrible thing. <laughs> oh man. I actually lost my train of thought about it. Wow. Where did you hear that about? I, I, I was reading about it on the the other day. Really? Yeah, they, they had an article. Wow. I, I, I looked up more into it because they just briefly touched on it. And it was a thing. Huh. That is really cool. That's huh. the idea that we have a soulmate. Huh. Well, that's cool. <laughs> Um, and as far as the Bible is concerned with it, there are very few situations where God specifically guided someone to get with someone else. Very few. One is in Genesis, where the the servant of, I believe it was Abraham, goes to find Isaac, his wife, and he prays to God and says, you know, about finding the, finding the woman, and God causes this event to happen, so he picks out the right person. Okay. However... Um, that wasn't really the slave's servant's choice so much because it was an issue of the family anyways. He would have only been picking from that family anyways. It just God made it easier since he was in an area he was unfamiliar with. So it's not like God God picked some random person out in the booms. Yeah. Um, there was another one that I was thinking of. Um, I thought you were going to say Adam and Eve. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, um, whatever it is, whatever it is, I think there is like maybe one other person. But other than that, the, what the Bible says is, you know, uh, going back to First Corinthians seven, it makes it out as though if there's someone who you are burning with passion for and who is burning with passion for you, carry it through, <laughs> play through. <laughs> if not, see what I mean. It doesn't really make it out to be like. Does that make sense? No. So, um, there's no such thing as a one. That is just something that kind of came up and people have clung to, um, and which has caused all kinds of problems. All kinds of problems, especially because feelings come up mm -hmm. and attraction comes up, and then people, oh, well, I think this person might be the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. God does sometimes bring people by when we, when we seek after him. Sometimes God will bring somebody by for us. That, that sometimes does happen. Okay, I have seen it happen before. Um, never date what you wouldn't marry. That's just a good principle. So as a result, I mean, not as a result, but on, on a side note, maybe consider not dating everyone. Be very selective with your dating. And only date somebody if you're going to marry them. Go into with that mindset, and both of you won't get hurt. If you don't go into that mindset, what's going to happen is both one or both of you will get hurt. It's just easier, simpler process if you only date what you think is marriage material. That makes sense. So, um, which is also why I don't believe in, in blind dating because it just complicates the whole situation, and just you know you don't know anything about this person, and uh, it's terrible. Um, they say that for the first couple of year, years of a relationship, you get to know the person, but then it takes a few years after that before you truly find out who the person really is. So if you know the person from before and then date them, your chances of success are probably a little bit higher. Just throwing that out there. Lest you wake up one day after being married to somebody and realize that they're not the person who you thought that they were, which has happened quite frequently. Just throwing that out there. So... Um, Arranged marriages were more of a thing back in the day. Don't really want to get into that, though. Um, feelings can get involved. Okay. Feelings can get involved, especially with, with, with dating in this kind of way, um, where you aren't going to think rational thoughts. You're not going to make, make wise decisions. Um, you're not going to see your their character flaw, faults, and it's going to impact your character in a negative way, too. Um, in fact, one of my family just did this. Got engaged to somebody who made – I mean, she was already a turd. I mean, oh my gosh, out of all my cousins, she's like the most spoiled, I guess, is the word. You know what I mean? 
And so then she got with this guy who's as immature as can be. And lo and behold, she's even more immature now. <laughs> and of course you can't ever tell somebody like that like any advice or anything because the, you're just always wrong and they're just always right. So, okay. All right. <laughs> Which brings me to another point that we're going to look at in a little bit. Get advice on relationships. It's okay. Get advice. You don't have to know everything and, and, and be right all the time. Just get advice on things. Um, so dating is definitely your choice. Uh, look at spiritual character. That should be your foremost concern. The Bible talks, you know, talks about not being unequally yoked, and I think it's more of a bigger principle. But it also applies to uh, relationships. Definitely does apply to relationships. Um, with a, if a Christian marries a non-Christian, what's accomplished? See what I mean? Also. There's the idea of if you're someone who, who has a heart after God, don't settle for a Christian that's just squeaking by. Does that make sense? Find somebody who I, – I saw this on Facebook the other day, and I agree. Find somebody who, who loves God more than you. That. Do that. Because if they, if they love you more than God, the relationship's not going to go anywhere, or you're going to have a whole lot of a hard problem later on. That's just a fact. Um, so spiritual character should be the first thing you look for. How he or she handles problems. When they're in a stressful situation, how do they respond? That will show whether they have an anger problem, whether they have a bitterness problem. That will show. Um, how he or she treats waiters or parents. How you treat your, your, your um, mom is usually how you will treat your spouse, your wife. And how you treat your dad is usually how you will treat your, treat your husband. Not always. Not always. Also, when you're looking looking for potential mates, look at the parents because there will probably be at least a handful of traits from the parents that are in the kids. Okay, just throwing that there. Mature people, immature people usually raise immature children who usually raise. See what I mean? Just kind of keep an eye out on these things. Um, uh, yeah, financial stability. You let's just put it like this: you don't want to marry a loser. I know that sounds rough, but you can't put feelings over fi your family well-being. Does that make sense? You don't want to marry some guy that's not going to provide for you. Or you don't want to marry some woman who's always going out blowing your money on everything. That's not a wise decision. Then your kids will never have what they need. Then you will never have a roof over your head. See what I mean? Bad decisions. Be wise with marriage. Just because you have feelings for somebody doesn't mean you should marry them. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. Feelings does not mean you should marry somebody. Because what will happen is this. You'll marry somebody, and then eventually down the road, you're going to have feelings for somebody else. Just a random waitress or maybe somebody that you work with. Whatever the situation, and then you'll start getting feelings for this person. And then what happens? Why well, have feelings for this person now? Or I have feelings for both of these people. Well, the Bible doesn't condone polygamy. Just in case you were wondering about going that way. And by the way, neither does this, neither does the um, does the United States of America. So we're good. I think we're all clear on that one. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, listen to advice. On, on, on looking for a mate, listen to advice. Oftentimes people will see your character flaws or the other person's character flaws long before you do. Your parents probably know you the best. They raised you. They spent the most time with you. They, they kind of see – they've seen you grow up. They know your flaws. I think they'll, they'll probably have at least a few good words to say on picking a spouse. Just something out there. Obviously, if you're not going to – planning on getting married anytime soon, <laughs> probably isn't that important for you guys. However, still, still, still for the rest of us, a, a good thing. Um, um, oftentimes what happens is people get themselves into bad situations because they couldn't listen to people. I've seen this happen a thousand times. A daughter who can't stand her father goes out and rebelliously gets with somebody and gets herself in a bad situation, maybe abusive. So then I have a reason. I have an excuse to divorce this guy. Yes, you have an excuse. Go ahead. Now, I'm not condoning staying in a relationship that is abusive. I'm not condoning that. I'm just saying. So then they leave the relationship, and then they get with another person, dead end person, who repeats the same patterns over and over again. And they just keep going from relationship to relationship. Why? Because they couldn't listen. They couldn't learn. Proverbs calls that being a fool. Okay. Uh, I pity the fool who does that. Um, 
So then you get into repeated behavior where you get into the same dead end relationships right after each other. You know, um, oftentimes people who get divorced will do this. Um, they'll get divorced and get with someone who is either worse or does the exact same dumb things as this other person. See what I mean? And, and, and I see this literally on a weekly basis in Tularosa. I didn't even know there were that many people in Tularosa. Who knew? Um, hidden flaws, I already talked about that. Uh, okay. What are some warning signs? Some things to look out for in a relationship. They don't. How do I say? If they sneak no, around, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, if they won't. Um, okay, say they do something wrong. Mm -hmm. They, but they won't admit it for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe not, elaborate a little not, bit. Not admit it, but. I'll think about it. Okay. Right. Zach? Um, I forget what I was going to say. Uh, oh, okay. They were sneaking around. Hmm. So unfaithful? Yeah. Okay. You start becoming aggressive. Okay. What are some signs? We were talking about early aggression. Like, they start yelling a lot. Okay. Or they start trying to hit. Okay. Maybe punching walls? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Could be a very big warning sign. Hiding stuff. Okay. Um, okay. Well, like you do certain things. Okay, like controlling? Yeah, controlling. Okay. Okay. Through, through past relationships and the amount of time spent between each relationship and the reasons for leaving the last relationships. So, like, being a rebound kind of thing? Is that what you're saying? Or? Like a serial dater. Okay. <laughs> okay. So someone who just doesn't really seem like they connect to the person, rather they just kind of flow? Like they're looking for the perfect person. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, like taking accountability for their actions. Or okay. That is okay. So they're kind of just a little bit immature? Yeah. They become possessive. Okay. Kind of goes in hand in hand with what, you, what she was saying, but can you elaborate a little bit? Like, oh, you're mine. Okay. You can't go see this person, you can't go see that person, you mm. can't do this, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their priorities. Okay. Like, for instance. Like, the, they, you should be their first priority. Well, after God, you know. But then, like, um, then, like work should uh -huh. come after that. But if, like, their high priority is, like, their, their high score on moral of Warcraft, then that's the warning sign. I told you. I just wanted to get to that to the scoreboard one time. I'm just kidding. We're playing Nazi zombies. <laughs> I said I was sorry, Grace. I forgot. No, seriously. Okay, so this is what had happened, okay? What had happened was... What had happened was... I told Gracie, wait for me. I'll be right back. I just need to go grab... I forgot what it was. But it was in, the, in, in my friend's room. So he had to buzz me in, so he buzzed me in and everything, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> An hour later. And then I get there, and he's playing this game, and I'm like, okay, I just got to get in and get out. I'm trying to stay focused. I'm trying to stay focused. And I'm like, hey, play around. And I'm just like, oh, no, I, is this a new map? Is this a new map? And they're like, yes. And I'm just like, ooh, man, it looks really fun. I just forgot. <laughs> I forgot. Oh. Three times. Four, four times. Three or four times. I forgot. Okay? What? And left Gracie in the a lobby an average of an hour. Maybe. <laughs> or an hour and a half. But never more than four hours. I promise you that. <laughs> I know it, it was an accident. I swear. Oh. And it only happened those three or four times. <laughs> <laughs> She'll never let that go. I swear. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, maybe warning signs, they keep bringing up the past. <laughs> oh, good one! Yeah! Like, like, uh, oh yeah, good, yes. yes. <laughs> or they're bringing up their, their past relationships. Oh. Uh, they haven't gone over the guy. The, the, well, oh, Billy did this. Or, or do that. they want you to dress or look a certain way. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she's just listing things about me at this point. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. And they wear glasses. 
and cut their hair short. I don't and like keep that. shaving off their goatee. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, manipulation or playing on your feelings. B- very big warning sign is that it is a is a big big red light and 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 different uh, counseling and stuff for for relationships that tend to head south. Um, um, oh, by the way, I do want to mention this. If you or someone you know is caught in, a, in, in an abusive relationship, um, remember that this is going to be with something that they do. Okay, they will um, they will abuse or threaten to abuse pets. They will abuse or threaten to abuse children. You, okay, whatever it is, make sure that you do not just laugh it off. If you are in the relationship, get help. If you have to do it covertly, do it covertly. Okay. Don't don't do something like a web search because they'll probably be checking your search history if they're that possessive. Um, do you know about that app that Dr. Phil Spiked me? No, I don't. Um, it's it's for abusive situations and stuff. And what it is is you download it on your phone and then it looks like a random app, like a news thing or something uh-huh. like that. And that way, you know, they don't know what it is. And, like, if you're in an emergency situation or that, you can program it to where it'll send a text to someone and to the police, and you just, like, tap it twice, uh-huh. and it sends that automatically. Wow. Do you know what it's called? I don't – I mean, you can look it up. I don't remember what okay. it's called. Very cool. Huh. Very cool. Um, and if you have to do something on, on the Internet that requires getting help, do, do the incognito tab. Yeah. It's not just for porn. Really? <laughs> 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 On like Google Chrome, I don't know if Mozilla Fox or Internet Explorer or any of that has it. Mm-hmm. You go into the file settings and you say uh, open up new incognito window. I think it's like Control I or something like that. Control Shift N. Okay. And do that. No, we have to do it at the church so that we don't log into the into the personal Facebook when we're doing updating the site stuff. Um, That's why. <laughs> And that's how I'm, what I'm sticking to. Um, and search that way. okay? Or if, if you think someone that you know is in an abusive relationship, find some way to, to, to get them the information and, and always be around uh, you know, when you think that there might be a problem. However, don't leave a paper trail. You don't want to be like leaving, hey, looks like your partner is a real a-hole. Here's the number for help. Yeah. <laughs> don't be an idiot. Like, come on. <laughs> Because <laughs> that will probably result in them getting abused. And with that being said, if they're threatening abusing something like a dog or a pet of some kind, remember that your safety is more important than the pet. And I, I'm sorry, I hope that the animal gets gets the care that it needs and they, that the person doesn't follow through, but you cannot throw away your whole life because of a pet. Okay, that's you, important. You could also leave with the pet. Or the you, you could try to do that too. Depending on the pet, it might be a possibility. But whatever it is, make sure to get the help. And make sure to not – don't – because they will switch their tactics. They'll go aggressive. If you leave me, I'll – or and then they'll sw- dial it back to, to, to apologetic. Mm-hmm. Look, I'm sorry. I won't do it anymore. They need help, and you need help. Yeah. You know what I mean? Were you going to say something? I seen something one day where this woman – I think it was on the news. This one woman was being abused. Mm-hmm. So she called a pizza place and acted like she was ordering a pizza. Hmm. But then at the end said, send help. Call 911. Oh. And they didn't charge her at all for it. But she got the help she needed before he... Before That's a good idea. Yeah. Very good idea. Very good idea. So, anyways. Manipulation or playing on your feelings. If everything is your fault, everything. I got mad and did this because it's your fault. I looked at porn because you. It's always your fault. Everything. Now, there are some things in, in a relationship where like it will genuinely be your fault. Like, I tripped over your shoe that you left in the middle of the hallway and hit my, hit my head on the floor. Okay, well, that was your fault because you left your shoe out. But when everything, even the thing, dumb things that they're choosing to do is your fault, this is a bad thing. Uh, violence, pornography, terrible uh, finances. Oh, well, I went on the spending spree because you, you know what I mean? No, no, you chose to go on that financial spe- uh, uh, or that uh, money spree. Um, getting leverage on you with pets, rumors, things I just talked about that is never okay to physically assault or verbally attack someone in a relationship. Just because they are not hitting you with their fists does not mean they are not hitting you. Make sure that you are in a safe situation. And, and, and okay. sometimes it starts out as like property damage, like they'll punch yeah. the wall. Yeah. Stuff, you know, and then yeah. Your face becomes the wall. Yeah. 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 
be on the lookout with these things. If you're with somebody who doesn't respect you with their mouth, verbally how they talk to you, chances are it might adapt to something else later on. Yeah. This is how how your how your partner should treat you. Not demanding sex from you until you are ready, which hopefully is at marriage. Hopefully. I, I dearly, choose, dearly hope that each one of you choose that. Um, and then following a pattern of treating you with respect. That should be a pattern um, that, that's there. Or at least they should be making progress of some kind, and you shouldn't marry them until they've made <laughs> progress to the point of called rehabilitation. But once again, I would trust a psychologist more than yourself on that, because we tend to, the people that we care about, we tend to give them more slack than maybe sometimes is wise. So once again, best decision is if somebody shows signs of possible aggression in the future, go ahead and just break it off and not wait for them to get better, usually. If you're married to the person, a separation might be the idea to go, just until maybe they get help or the situation is resolved in some way. I'm not going to say divorce, per se. But I'm not. I'm, I am going to say, don't hang out in a situation that's going to involve you or children being hurt. Especially if kids are in the picture, you don't have the right to keep them in that situation. That's no longer your problem. Okay? If if you are, are, are you don't have kids and it's just you and, and you want to make that dumb decision, I warn you against it. But it's your decision. But if there's kids in the house, you forfeit that responsibility of that of that choice. You have to get them out of the house. Um, if you think uh, you can change them. You're not going to change the person. The person who you date is the person you're going to marry. Maybe there's going to be things that you didn't realize was in them, but if you are going to a relationship with, oh, I'm going to change them, you're wrong. Like, there's no other way of saying it. you're wrong. Um, if God is telling you to, but he hasn't said anything about forgiving, serving, etc. If all of a sudden God gives you a special revelation about this person you need to get with, but he hasn't been telling you anything about, like, I want you to go into ministry, or I want you to... Why all of a sudden is God breaking his silence towards you to tell you to get into a relationship? That's not the biblical model, is it? See what I mean? So these should all be signs of uh, warning signs that kind of come by. Um, so what are some reasons for getting married? Okay. Okay. Hey friend. Okay. What is love? Tax break. <laughs> no, that's why you have kids. Huh? Um, so you don't mess up. Elaborate a little bit. So you don't have sex out of marriage. <laughs> With that being said, one of the worst decisions we ever made was waiting to get married. We didn't mess up before marriage, but we we got into a lot of compromising positions because we did that. And why did we wait? Because the parents weren't ready for us to marry. This is where I say do not listen to your parents. <laughs> if you have already made the decision to marry someone, and maybe your parents are on board, they just want you to wait for a little bit, don't. Get married as quickly as possible. Once the decision for both of you to marry has been made, this is what's going to happen. You're going to tempt yourself. You're going to mess up. You're gonna go, you're gonna lead yourself into sin, and maybe eventually get to the point where you guys don't even get together because of something that happened. That is the only reason I uh, reason I say don't listen to your parents on that one. See, what I mean, if the decision to be married has been made, regardless of how stupid it is to marry that person, don't put it off. I I, I, I tell people this all the time: do not have long engagements. Do not have long engagements. Once the decision is made, and that's what you guys are going to do, get it done with. Um, any any other thing? No. Uh, if you are having sex with them, uh, if you want to have an intimate relationship, these are things. I mean, that basically, if you love them, is what Ben said. Um, to have a helper, um, having a spouse is an enormous benefit in life. An enormous benefit in life. It's fantastic. Um, you don't have to worry about doing things yourself. You know, oh, well, I have to be in Almogordo in, in in five minutes, but I also have to be in La Luz this evening. Well, see, what I mean. Your, your spouse can help you with things. See what I mean? You, you carry the load together. Um, and that is a huge benefit um, for a lot of people. Um, if you want a family, however, I want to give a disclaimer on this one. Some people get married for the sole reason that they think they're gonna it's going to bring their life joy. <coughs> okay? Or if I just have a kid, then I'll be happy. 
what did I just say? If you're not happy before the marriage, you're not going to be happy after the marriage. If you're not happy without kids, you're not going to be happy with kids. So with that being said, however, um, if you want a family, I mean, obviously marriage would be the way to get that done, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh. um, so, but the what is the biblical model? Husbands are the head of the house. However, wives are willfully subjected. Okay. First Peter 3, 7 says this, and it's been kind of misused a lot, um, and so I'm just going to kind of read it real quick. A lot of people think that women are weaker, um, that they are le – where is First Peter? Goodness sakes. Um, that, they are, that they are weaker, that they are somehow a little bit less maybe, and uh, that's definitely not what we see. First Peter 3, 7. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel. Now, I don't really have time to get into this, but I, t I take the stance that Blomberg takes on this passage. Long story short, he's not talking about weaker in the aspect of um, less capable. Weaker is in the way of women have to subject themselves to their husbands. Okay, And that's what he's talking about. He's not saying women are, women are, are less capable. Just so we're clear on that. Um, I could get into that into study on First Peter. I don't really want to right now, though. Um, so they're not weaker or less capable. Husbands cannot be tyrants. I see I see husbands abuse this all the time. Oh, I'm the head of the household, so I'm going to make all kinds of dumb decisions, and you just have to do what I'm going to say. Where does the Bible say that? Now read the rest of the verse here. Since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. If you mistreat your spouse, your prayers won't be answered. Yes. Yes, that's what he just said. If you mistreat your spouse, your prayers will not be answered. I was just reading another passage. Where was it? Um, I think it was Malachi, I think. And he says, I'm not even listening to, to you on this. And why? Because and he goes through about how, how they're showing their wife's contempt. And I, I don't have time to look at it, but it's Malachi 2 or 3. Or, oh, actually, we're going to read it at the end of the lesson. Never mind. I'll come back to that. Um and there will, there will be tension because of the fall in, in any relationship, though. There will always be the woman kind of trying to take the lead and the man kind of tempted to abuse his authority or kind of just hand it over to the woman. There will always be that tension because of the fall. Go ahead. Reason number one, um, if you're having sex with him, seems like a really terrible reason. I, I see that go wrong. Well, let me kind of let me kind of elaborate. If, if there are two people who are who – are, Oh, we love each other, so we're just living with each other. Either get married or break up. Exactly. I, I would recommend that one over... Like, what do you mean? Get married. Okay, I'll, I'll give you an example of a recent people that I know, okay? Yeah, go they, for it. They hurried up and got in a relationship together, quickly moved in together, started having sex. Um, Wait, they moved in and had sex together? Yes. Uh, it... it, it Got found out that they were, uh -huh. and so um, they quickly got married, and now their relationship is super terrible. Well, see, but that wasn't because they rushed the marriage. That was because they really the re they rushed the relationship. Well, but they got married because they were having sex and they wanted to have sex. So they're just idiots, like. Right. That that's, doesn't mean that's, that's generally how it goes. Well, that's that's why I said don't rush sex. Like, right. and if you are in a place of having sex, like this is what I'm talking about. Is the person, is the person who, who who's been living together for a lengthy <laughs> time, maybe even years, and they don't see the reason of getting married. And it's like, well, if you're gonna do this, you, you need to. What I what my personal opinion is, is if you're in a relationship where somebody. I hate to say this, and I actually didn't want to say this, but I'm only saying this because you brought it up. So it's your fault. <laughs> Usually in situations where people are having sex before marriage, it doesn't go well. Usually. Especially if they've had sex before the person that they're having sex with currently. Usually. And so I usually think it's the best idea for them to break up. However, because of what the Bible says about reconciliation and whatnot, I try to always encourage people that they can make it and they can make it work and that every relationship is going to have their problems and so they should go ahead and get married. Because it seems to be what the Bible, what the Bible advises. In a broad sense, 
I don't want to make it sound like I'm going against what the Bible says. It seems to say what the Bible is implying in a broader sense, but a lot of times people who have the mentality of this, this living together thing, so, 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 don't have the mentality of fixing it. Right, but it, but it also says that, no, no, because it says no, 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 because it says it says it, it, um, it, you know about first off in the law it talks about where if you uh, had sex with the virgin to to go ahead and, and, and marry her, see what I mean? And it says to go ahead and pay the, pay the bride price and go ahead and get into it, see what I mean? Um, and then uh, again in First Corinthians seven it talks about if if you're burning up with lust, you know, marry so that you don't sin. You know, and that, and that kind of thing. And, and if you are already sinning with the with the, having sex outside of marriage, it doesn't necessarily justify that. What those people need to do is they need to face face their problems, get counseling, and, and they can make it work. See what I mean? Does that make sense? Ben, just say it. Like your body, you love. Just say it. <laughs> you know this is going to be another Paul and Barnabas. I this think, is going to be another Paul and Barnabas. <laughs> I think it makes a difference also if the, if the people are sold out on God or not. That's actually a good point, if, too. If they're not completely sold out on God, then the relationship really isn't going to work. Well, to yeah, that's first. true. And with that being said, I mean, any relationship is doomed to failure if God's not the cornerstone. Right. So I guess that's a good point. But these people, are, are, they, are, they, are they Christian? Are they active in, in church? Are they active in, in, in... Yeah. Okay, so why did they do that in the first place? Um, because they were hoarding. They wanted to sleep with each other. So the, they're not like... They're probably like Baptists or something, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. This is a joke. Nobody take that serious. It's a joke. <laughs> joking. All right? Just joking. It's a long-going thing that... Baptists have to make fun of Pentecostal people. Pentecostal people have to make fun of Baptists. It's just what we do. <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, I mean, it, I go, it comes... I just think that because you're having sex is a terrible reason to get married. Well... Or if you're having sex and you have a child, to get married for that is, is in my opinion, a very terrible reason. Right, but with that being said, that's not fair to the child. You know what I mean? Like... But... But is it, 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 it like okay? I'll, I'll give you an like answer. that's not that in and of itself is not a sufficient okay. reason to not do it though. Let, 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 let me give you that reason, okay? Okay. There's this guy. Okay. okay. Here's guy. guy. I know. Okay. You know a lot of people who have sex. <laughs> <laughs> that's where you can go, right? He's sleeping around. Okay. With, with with women, and this this woman winds up getting married, right? And and to him. To, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah. Okay. Pregnant by him. Okay. Okay. So. They, and they've been kind of dating or whatever, but he had no intentions of marrying her. Okay. Until he finds out that she is now pregnant. So now he's going to do the honorable Christian thing, uh -huh. marry her. And so now they have a terrible marriage, and... I know what you're talking about! <laughs> Wait, that's right! And their kids um, are in the middle of this terrible marriage where there's constantly... Right, but the marriage isn't the problem. The marriage is that they aren't working on the marriage. I mean, the problem is that they aren't working on the marriage. Well, well I... It, like, like... I, I'm not disputing that, but but I I believe that there are some people that just can't be together. Right, but once once there once there's sex in the equation, you you, you you it doesn't work the same way though. See what I mean? You've already attached yourself to that person. Right. But if you're not willing to to work on it, then. Wouldn't it have been better? Well, if you're not if you're not working on it, Ben, if you're not really married in the first place, anyways. Marriage is a commitment to, to that you're going to, to respond in that person's best interest. So if they're not doing that in the first place, then they didn't really mean their wedding vows now, did they? Like, <laughs> but they're married. Yes, by law, but it's better it's better to be married in spirit than it is to be married in law. You see what I mean? <laughs> and I'm not saying you should be married in spirit without being married by law, but I'm saying if you are married, you should attach yourself. That's why the Bible says this very specifically. Leave your par your parents and cleave to your wife. Become one flesh with her. This is why it says this. But what that what that per what that person is doing, who I know what you're talking about, I do. Um, what that person is doing is they are not cleaving to their spouse. See what I mean? And the spouse, or maybe in this situation, possibly, is not cleaving to them. 
See what I mean? So the problem isn't that they, that they got married. The problem is that they didn't have the idea of commitment commitment in the first place. Right, because they, they, they got married for this wrong reason. Right. And so so they should go. So why not? That in and of itself, they're – no, no, hold on, Ben. Hold on, Ben. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, Grace, hold on, hold on. Their failure – to do the right thing is not saying that that thing is not the right thing to do. That just means that they're doing it wrong. Does that make sense? And just because they failed in that does not give the reason that this is a bad thing to do. See what I mean? Does that make sense? I'm going to agree. <laughs> just because they got married for the wrong reasons doesn't mean they can't make it work. Yeah. I'll give you another example. Gracie and I got married for the wrong reasons. But we made it work. And now we love each other. You can make it work if you commit to it. A marriage is never in a failure as long as there's one person trying. That's just a fact. Like, I, I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, I cannot with good conscience say, yes, every time you need to break up. Here's the thing. Marriage is... The number one hardest thing you can do in a lifetime. Oh yeah, that's true. Constantly around that person. Twenty four seven to to make an effort. If you're not constantly Sorry, making an effort, then it's not gonna work. You have to give up above and beyond. Okay, okay, let's, 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 oh my gosh. Okay. Say these people had never gotten married. Okay. And the child had grown up with. Um, one or the other. Okay. Most likely the mother, okay? Okay. And he um, would have gotten, like, she would have married somebody that she actually loved, and, and they would have okay. worked it out. And, and so he would have had a good example of what a marriage is versus the bad example that he's got of now. This yeah, but you're de dealing in hypotheticals. Huh? You're dealing in hypotheticals. Maybe she could have found someone. Even, here's, here's the truth. If you can't learn to love the person that you chose to sleep with, you're never going to learn to love someone else. Yeah. That's just a fact. That's just the way it works. Like, you can try, and you can, but you'll, what you'll end up doing every single time is you keep going from person to person looking for that perfect person. It just seems like a terrible... I know it seems like a terrible thing, okay, but Ben, trust me on this. Like, sex is a terrible piece of marriage. <laughs> right, but, but, but keep, this, keep, keep this in mind. Having the having a good marriage is not a basis for for getting married, and um, having a good reason for getting married is also not a good basis for getting married. See what I mean? Does that make sense? It, like, it, oh, so I was gonna say I think it's better to get married because you're having sex and not sinning than to continue to sin and not. Or okay, okay, to okay, abstain let, 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 and let, having let, connected let yourself to that person, separate yourself. Yeah, from yeah. Them. Let, let, let me throw this out there. Okay. Go ahead. Just because they got married, they didn't stop sinning because he still sleeps around. Well, see, there's the problem right there. <laughs> <laughs> he won, He didn't really marry then, and he's he's actually guilty of not following through on his marriage vows. That's his problem. See what I mean? What he should have done what he should have was done. So, so committed. So it would have hurt for him to have never married her because he never actually married her, right? Wait, say what? Okay, because you're saying he never actually married. Her. No, he did marry her by law, but he by needs law. to by yeah. spiritually he but needs spiritually to commit now that he is in that law. Never married her, right? No, I'm saying he needs to commit, commit mm -hmm. in that. In that but, but you're saying he hasn't done that, right? If he's sleeping ground, that's kind of that's, saying it in and of itself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it wouldn't have been a difference then. No, because it, the the law is still there. And she's not. She's not the law is of some there. benefit. It's just better. To, to, to be truly attached to the person that you're legally tied to. It's just better. It's not required, but it's just better. It works better. You have yeah. less fights. Things happen to flow smoother, smoother. But you don't have to. I don't have to love Gracie. All we have to do is be married. That's all we got to do. However, it will be a very miserable marriage if we do that. And that goes for whether or not we were having sex before marriage or after marriage. Make sense? Kind of? I, 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 I'm going to agree to disagree. I, I stand with this. Sex is a terrible reason to get married. Just read through what the Bible says. Goodness sakes, Ben. Okay, and just to end the conversation, dogs are better than cats. <laughs> and yes, Paul was Bar wrong. No, <laughs> Paul was not necessarily wrong because Barnabas was the one who stormed off. End of discussion. Barnabas was wrong, yes. End of discussion. So women do not have to subject themselves to men. Okay, did you understand that?
Women do not have to subject themselves to, to men. Wives have to subject themselves to husbands. Okay? Does that make sense? In other words, it's not the end of the world if there's a woman president. It's not the end of the world if you work for a woman. Does that make sense? Yeah? Um, so that the, the thing comes to you, to you submit to whoever your authority is. Does that make sense? What are some misconceptions about love or marriage? Good sex is you, you get married. Then I'm choosing to ignore you. <laughs> um, that once you find that true love, that everything hold on, will be hold good, good thought. Ben, here's the thing: <laughs> everybody marries for the wrong reasons. Everybody. And then after you've been married for a while, you learn to to just. To the right reasons. Yeah. Let's just say that. I mean, everybody goes into marriage with the wrong idea, with the wrong actions, messing up all the time. That's what. In fact, I think marriage is Latin for messing up. I I I I I, I don't agree like that. I, I think that people go in with wrong ideas and misconceptions and stuff, but they don't all get married for the wrong reasons. <laughs> what I mean by the wrong reasons is, is misconceptions. Okay. Yeah. If you're gonna argue about a grammar, not grammar, but um. But that doesn't mean the wrong reason. Sex is definitely a wrong reason. <laughs> oh my god! No, it is not. <laughs> now check. Go ahead with whatever you were saying. Okay, okay, okay saying? wait. Let, let, no, no, let, no, let no, 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 okay. no, 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 okay. Let, let's say <laughs> that, um, okay, uh, Jim Saka passed away. Who? I, Jim, Jim Saka, Jim and, and I went and slept with Kathy Saka. That you dirty, dirty. I, I went and slept with her one time. I should go marry her? No. I didn't. I said if it's an if, 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 okay. if you are in a relationship so with someone that you're having sex with. So we just hook up like once a week. Well, it, no, that's an ongoing thing. Then yes, you should either call like, it we off. Just or, have sex and then we leave. We part each other. For a one uh, for a one time thing, I would say you no, probably. Once a week. Every week we just have sex and then. That's what I'm talking about. If it's an ongoing relationship with someone, we should get married. You need to either marry or let or let that down. end. Yeah. Okay, right. I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing with breaking it off. But that's not the only solution. You can marry, too. And more of what I was talking about is, like, where people are committing to each other in, in oh, no, no, this is the person, this is my relationship, okay, with, right? Commonwealth. Right. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, like commonwealth, you know what I mean? Where, and that was specifically the reason that I was talking about, though I think it does apply to what we were, what we were arguing about. Where, where people will just, like, you know, I, I, this is the person I chose to be with, and that's just how it is. Fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't sleep with that person. Just marry them. Instead of sleeping with them, see what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. Where they've already decided to to stick together, and if you haven't made a decision to stick with someone, you're just sleeping around. You should stop sleeping around if you have care anything for your spiritual growth. Like with that being said, with in the case of you sleeping with this woman, like first off, that's just gross. Second off, um, ugh, that's gross. People here know that woman. Like goodness sakes, that's disgusting. Ugh. Uh, third off, you. And fourth off, like, how much older is she? You know what? That doesn't she even matter. Something. That doesn't even matter. Like, I'm moving on past no, that. No, that does matter. It matters a lot. <laughs> well, maybe he's got a lot of money. I don't know. Whatever. Fifth, fifth off, then, like, what the hell? <laughs> like, goodness sakes. Either you would, with, with like, the, in the state, of, in, the, in, the, in the position of where you're just hooking up, you don't have the mentality of commitment. You have the mentality of hooking up. It is a once in a blue moon kind of thing. For that kind of situation, I would say stop sleeping around. And if and if if you guys can't do that because you you are in love, then I would say then marry. If you're going to continue this behavior, marry. If you're not, then don't. And that's how, kind of what first what first Corinthians said says too. Hold on a second. That is what Paul says too. He says if you're going to do this thing, marry, and that way it won't be a bad thing. Or if, or you know you don't you can abstain if you have that gift in you, okay. and that's fine. So, so, so you're combining it with other elements now. You had it listed solely as if you're sleeping with the person. No, I said there was a reason. Right. Not, but, not like the only solution but, but, to the but, problem but, but, or the only but, reason. You, but you didn't have it mixed. You, and so that's what I was arguing is just having sex with a person is not a reason to marry a person. <laughs> Why didn't you say that? Because it was, that's what we've been arguing. Do you see how <laughs> great? You know what, Ben? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you are ongoing sexual activity with one person, you need to marry them. How about that? Problem solved. We're all good, right? We can move on now? Or did you have something to say yes to? 
Go ahead. Now I'm just going to add to yours. Oh my if gosh. You're on, if you're in an ongoing relationship I'm getting a sec. And, you're cur- and, you, and you're having sex with them, if you can't break it off because you can't abstain, then you're going to get married. That's what I just said. You just repeated what I, I just said. So longer, the longer we're not going forward because people are repeating like, what I'm saying. Repeating what you said in your mind. Would you like me to repeat it now? You know what else? <laughs> you know what else was said in Men's Me today? Somehow they got to going that if you, whenever you tell somebody something, you need to tell them three times. So one, two. <laughs> your audience awaits you, Chuck. Okay. What are some misconceptions about love or marriage? <laughs> <laughs> once you find your one true love, everything will be puppy dogs and rainbows. Yeah. And that's true. No, it's not. Anything else? Everything will fall in place. Like, what do you mean? Well, but once you get married, basically all your problems magically go hmm. away. I gotcha. I gotcha. You can fix the person? Yeah. That was, the person. And that was on that side that you said doubt. Um, mm-hmm. It was uh, warning signs. One of the last ones was, um, if you think you can change the person, you shouldn't be with them. Mm-hmm. There'll never be arguments. Uh-huh. I'll never yell at you. <laughs> or... Okay. That once, um, let's say, they get married, that he'll never be tempted by another woman. Or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I'd be enough for him. No woman is ever enough for a guy. <laughs> Guys are way too big of perverts. This is not going to happen. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> what did you say? What? I said, maybe I should have <laughs> I'm just going to play through. Uh, Your ministry or your life direction won't change. You can go and do the exact same thing that God God would have led you to with your spouse. What does the Bible say? You have to give up things, and they do too. I'm I'm convinced in my mind that Gracie would have either been a church planter or a missionary. Because that's the direction that she was leading her life. But she chose to give that up when she chose to marry me. There were some dreams that I had that required me to be single. Now that I'm not single and I have a child, I don't have the right to do those things anymore because my wife needs me and my, and my son needs me. See you know what I mean? Um, 1 Corinthians 7, 30, 32? Yeah, 32-35. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord, but the married man is anxious about worldly things. How to please his wife and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. Um, And then verse 35. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. I'm saying this for your benefit. So, obviously... You will have divided. You will have divided uh, attention there. You can fall in or out of love. Eh, love is an effort. The honeymoon comes and goes, mm-hmm. and every honeymoon comes to an end. I just feel so. Yeah, what you're actually looking for is a TV or a pet monkey, not a husband. <laughs> if what you're looking for is to be entertained, not a husband. If you're looking for someone who will always make you feel warm and cuddly, you're looking for a pet, possibly a dog, maybe something in the neighborhood of a monkey. But once again, not really the job of a husband. See you know what I mean? So keep in mind what you're actually looking for and whether that's something that your husband would actually be able to resolve. Um, also, you cannot fall in and out of love because love is a commitment that you make to somebody. Maybe you can fall in and out of feelings or in and out of attraction. It is po- That is possible. But in and out of love, not so much. We've just grown too far apart. Mm, no. Y- any, any marriage can be salvaged. Um, any marriage can be salvaged. Uh, marriage is all about love. <laughs> marriage is all about commitment. Not not some feeling that you may or may not have. Marriage is about commitment. So a lot of people get married with the idea that it's about feelings or some other nonsense, and then they end up getting divorced because they went into it with thinking that it was something else. It's not all about these feelings. It's all about that commitment. I will never leave you. Let's get married. I will never leave you either. Let's get married. 
Well, there's your marriage. That's the basis of marriage is commitment. Um, Hollywood or pornography is real intimacy. The things that you see on TV, the things that you see on your computer screen, this is what intimacy looks like. <sighs> it also is a, is a common theory that, that uh, marital love is, is, is boring. You know, either it's sex is, is not going to happen that much, or maybe um, the sex is maybe not as good in marriage. And for that, I say it is what you make it. It is what you make it. You can have the best sex life in marriage. You can have the worst sex life in marriage. It really matters where you take it. Um, but obviously, what you see on pornography, what you see on movies, it's complete false fiction. Okay. It, that's like all those love movies, you know. Oh well, with it, um, like the Lake House with what's her face and Keanu Reeves, yeah. you know, where where they become pen pals and they get to know each other and then they fall in love and that's not how real life works. That's not how it works. Um, yeah. And the things that you see in a pornography uh, video are not going to be really based on reality either. Like where the woman's just dying for more of the man. Yeah, no. I mean, that doesn't happen. <laughs> Most of the time it's like this. You want to have sex tonight? <sighs> I'm kind of tired. That's usually what it, what, it goes, what it goes like. However, if you're married and you would like to increase your, your chances of sex, a good idea is to probably show love to your spouse, and they will be a whole lot more willing to give you sex. Just throwing that out there. Um, so love is blind. That's true. Uh, marriage is what you make it. Which is definitely what you make, and it's an ongoing thing. The people who have good marriages are because the people are currently working on their marriages. The instant that you think you have a good marriage is the instant that you will not have a have good marriage, and so on and so forth. Um, um, you will never fall in love with someone else who is not your spouse. And even if you're perfectly content with your spouse, there's always a temptation of falling in love with somebody else. It's always the, the thing. And what do I mean by falling in love? I mean the feelings. That's all I'm talking about is feelings. You can't accidentally commit to somebody. That's just stupid. Um, so regardless of... Okay, I already said that. Um, you'd be perfect together. Happiness will be found in a relationship. <laughs> There's nobody that you'd be perfect with. Because nobody is compatible. As long as you have one woman and one man in a relationship, it's not going to be compatible. Pastors talked about this a hundred times. Because men tend to be, I want more. And women tend to be, I want more. And so you get two people. <laughs> what do you think is gonna happen? Um, which is why I think homosexuality is the only way to go. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm totally just kidding. Because <laughs> the way I said that it made it sound like I was only talking about one man and one woman, but yeah. the happiness can be found with one man and one man. <laughs> so, anyways, um, distraction will be found in a relationship. That is all that will be found in a relationship. If you are not happy and you get married. All that will happen is you'll be distracted for a time, sometimes longer than other times. But whatever the issue is, the happiness is whatever is causing the unhappiness is still a factor. Um, sex will make him or her love me. Eh, not true. Um, if he doesn't love you before he has sex with you, he's not going to love you after you have sex with him. So. <laughs> then let it go. Oh, no. Um, waiting is old-fashioned. Eh, no, that's not true. A lot of people still wait today. Gracie and I did not have sex with anybody before we got married. We had sex for the first time with each other. That was it. And it is not that old-fashioned of a thing. There's just a lot of people who think that it, who think that it's okay to sleep around. In fact, it's almost like an initiation thing in, in, in middle school and high school is you have to have had sex with someone, which is just gross. Because I don't want to think about middle schoolers having sex. Like, I don't know. It just seems, it seems as gross as my parents having sex. It's just gross. I can't, I can't deal with that. That's just gross. Um, um, but it is definitely not old-fashioned. Um, the problem is, is maybe you're just looking in the wrong areas. I mean, that, that's a thing. Um, if they don't have sex with me, they don't love me. Just because someone's not willing to have sex with you doesn't mean that they don't love you. It means that they have a higher respect for themselves than they do for being your next trophy. Women like being treat treated like a bee. I know rap music makes it out like this, but actually they no. don't. Women still want to be treated well. We can't listen to our music because people like Kanye West don't actually understand romance. People like Kanye West are the reason why there's no romance in the world. Just throwing that out there. So with that being said, women don't like to be treated like bees. I know for some people they're, they're still surprised when I say this. Um, your spouse will always be the same. Your, your spouse will always be the same person. Mm, no, 
a lot of times after you marry, they turn and they turn. It turns out that they're not the person you thought they were. Or sometimes God will get a hold of them and, and God will change them. You shouldn't go into something with the idea that I will change this person, but sometimes they will change in different ways. Here's another example. You marry someone who's sweet, he's loving. After a few years, there's no romance in your marriage. What happened? I thought he was sweet and, uh, sweet and loving. People change sometimes. Were you going to say something? That actually happened to my sister. Yeah? They were married for almost 13 years. In the last four, he started becoming abusive. Yeah. People people change sometimes. People, people definitely change. Um... How do you stop cheating? Um, what time is it? 8.11? I'm just going to go through this. Um, tell your spouse if it becomes a thing. Okay, if it's just like if it's just like this. Um, oh, she's attractive, and then you just move on. Don't tell your spouse. You're just going to hurt their feelings. However, if it turns into a thing where you're constantly thinking about the person, or maybe you're going a little bit further than just thinking about the person, or maybe you're actually meeting up with this person or getting to know them on a more intimate level, tell your spouse. I know sin thrives on, on, on privacy. Sin thrives on privacy. Get rid of the privacy. Um, so first off, I tell your spouse. Um, but watch how you say it. Not, I found someone who I think is really hot. Or I think I found someone who I think is better than you. you. Don't say it like that. You say it like this. I'm really having a struggle. And I really need your help. With, the, with whatever it is. See what I mean? And now you've just found something to unite the two of you. And honestly, if you think that your spouse is never going to have struggles, you're immature. You need to realize your spouse is going to have struggles, and you need to be ready to help them through, them through it because that's what you committed to when you got married. If you can't deal with that, if you can't deal with the possibility that your spouse may someday cheat on you, don't get married because that's always a thing that could potentially happen. You know what I find funny? Go ahead. Is the uh, people who are, say, like on their second marriage mm -hmm. and then get surprised when that spouse cheats on them, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> I heard something that says if they cheated with you, they will cheat on you. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> he left. He left his wife for me, and then he left me for this other woman. No, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Stop thinking about them. Whatever you need to do to distract yourself. Play video games if you have to. Stop thinking about them. Whatever it is. Zombie video games? <laughs> Not zombie video games. Um, stop meeting with or talking to them. If you're at the point where you're where you're meeting, if you if this has gone that far, stop it. And what some people do is they do this. They either get a separation or the divorce just barely goes through. And they instantly move on. I have seen marriages that get to, that end in divorce be reunited with the same two people. I have seen that happen before. It's not that crazy of a thing. I've seen that happen too, and I've seen it end terribly. Yes, there's always a possibility <laughs> that could happen. But you know what else I've seen, Ben? I've seen somebody get married. I've seen somebody get, somebody get married and cheat on their spouse. Does that mean that this marriage is not is not adequate? No, it doesn't mean the marriage is not adequate. It means that there was someone stupid who didn't who took advantage of it. Goodness sakes, Ben, you're wrong. Barnabas was in the wrong. <sighs> so stop meeting or talking with the person. Distance yourself. Distance yourself from the person. If you work with them, distance yourself. Goodness sakes. Um, go move to a different job if you. Add, there's absolutely no other way to move around it. There's always another way than, than, than submitting yourself to, to becoming intimate with this person. Um, we don't need to test ourselves. We don't need to put ourselves in compromising positions. We don't need to do that. Does that make sense? And if you are tempting yourself, remove the temptation. If you have a problem with looking at porn, don't have internet at your house when, you, when you're home alone. Do you know what I mean? Like, figure these things out. There's free programs that you can install on your computers or your phones that will prevent you from doing these things. There's accountability that you can do. There's all kinds of different things that you, that you can do. Like, goodness sakes. Um, a lot of times we fall to temptation because we tempt ourselves. Never tell the person you are struggling. Ooh, never go to the person you're struggling with and tell them. I'll give you an example. Let's say I'm having I'm I'm married to Gracie, right? But let's say I'm having feelings towards Nicole. Nicole, I'm having some thoughts about you. See what I mean? No, don't do that. That's a terrible idea. But yet somehow every couple of years I see somebody do this. It's like what are you thinking? Stop the thing that you were doing. Don't tell them. Because now it's just become another thing that'll separate you and your spouse. And by the way. Um, it usually encourages 
immoral activity. Just throwing that out there. If the person doesn't know you're not you're attracted to them, there will be a whole lot more of a chance that they won't sleep with you. <laughs> like goodness sakes. Um, realize you only have a right right to think about your spouse. When you only have a right to think dirty about the person you are married to. That is your, your that is your right. You can think dirty about your spouse. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Um, however, also realize uh, I don't really want to say that um, they have committed themselves to you, and you, you and you've committed yourself to them. So so that that is the person who who you can think dirty about. Other than that, it's off the table. So um, stop justifying your stupid, stupidity with theirs. This is what we do as married people. Because my spouse is doing something, it gives me the right to cheat on them. Because my spouse is doing so and so, it gives me the right to. I don't know. You pick something. See what I mean? And, and so, we, because they're doing something stupid, we think we, we can do something stupid. That's justifying stupidity with stupidity. We talked about this in the um, discipleship class uh, that we did on Sunday mornings there for a while. I think we'll do it eventually again. Um, and leave God out of it. Oh my gosh. Oh, God told me to get divorced this person. Okay, I'm sure he did. But in the meantime, you should do what the Bible says and, and try to make it work. Okay? People always try to try to use God as a, as a, as a coping, uh, not a coping, but a, a, as a way to weasel out of something. Excuse. Yeah. What were you saying? As an excuse. As an excuse, yeah. God told me that I can divorce this person. He told you that you could, so you were asking him progressively until he finally said yes? Because I think he told Balaam that he could go too, and that didn't end well either. Like, just be... <laughs> and also, sometimes we hear what we want here. And also, stop attributing things to God that aren't God. I mean, ugh, I could really go on forever about that one. But feelings, no matter how intense, will pass. I, have, I, I just love this person. The feelings will pass. They'll pass. Just hold off. Stay faithful. Through the storm, you'll get through it. The movie Fireproof, a Christian movie about um, staying married to someone, one of the things that they say in it was, um, you never abandon your, abandon your partner even in, in a fire. I forget how he words it, but basically that that's the way he words it. You never abandon your partner in, in a fire. Well, it's the same thing. You're having a fire of passion. Don't abandon your spouse in it. Um, so don't, don't throw away what matters for a fling. Marriage is worth it if we stick with it. And there will be hard times, definitely, but it's worth it if you stay with it. So just some, just the last thing, the last slide here. Um, um, just yeah, okay. Uh, men gra gravitate to what and to where they receive the most respect. And I put where instead of where. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, j for those of you who didn't catch this, this isn't I'm wearing clothes. <laughs> Where is W H E R E? Eight. <sighs> okay. Men will gravitate to wherever they receive the most respect. So as a spouse, you need to remember this and remember to give your your husband respect, even if you don't think that they deserve it. And for that matter, don't be around people who don't show your husband respect either, because that's just going to cause more problems. You need to find ways to resolve your marital problems, not to create marital problems. Can I ask them that too? Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Never talk bad about your spouse to someone else. Or be around someone who's talking bad about your spouse. Because it only will cause you to think more negative about them. It's true. Them. It's true. Um, and also, women gravitate to where they receive the most love. If you think your wife's getting distant, show her love. That will probably go away. Probably. Sometimes there are other issues as well, but I'm just saying these are the basics of woman and men's psychology. Men gravitate to respect. Women gravitate to love. Um, you don't have to have kids. Even if you're married, you don't have to have kids. Kids is not is not necessarily for everyone. You know, a lot of people have problems when they physically cannot have se uh, have kids. Um, you can always adopt. And adoption, I mean, you think whatever you want, but when you adopt something, it, it becomes yours. It becomes your child. It becomes your family. Like I don't care what your what your belief is on adoption now. Once you adopt something, you know it becomes it becomes part of your family. You know what I mean? And so just because it didn't come from your womb or come from your sperm does not mean that it's not your child, okay? Now, those people who have had parents that abandoned them, you know what I mean, um, or weren't there for them growing up or sexually molested them growing up, all these different things, they know what it's like to be abandoned by blood and be received by these other people. See what I mean? So, um, yeah. Marriage is for one man and one woman. 
uh, the only condoned sexual activity in all the Bible is for one man and one woman. Every other kind is is is, is mentioned not to do. Um, the only one that God ever says do this is when it mentions one one man and one woman. Um, obviously, the Bible does not condone everything that it mentions. The Bible does mention frequently people ha partaking in polygamy. That doesn't mean that it condones polygamy. You have to read the whole Bible, not just certain parts. Um, Malachi 2, which was the part that I was talking about earlier. Oops, where am I going? Malachi chapter 2, verse 13 through 16. And this sound thing you do, you cover the Lord's altar with tears, with weeping and groaning, because he no longer regards the offering or accepts it with favor from your hand. But you say, why does he not? And this is the answer. Because the Lord was witness between you and the wife of your youth, to whom you have been faithless, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. Did he not make them one with a portion of the Spirit in their union? See, it mentions there about how it doesn't matter about um, the reasons why you got married. I'm kidding. Kidding, Ben. Did he not make... That was for you... You know what? Never mind. No, I'm going to say it. That was for you bringing it back up twice. And then thinking that it's funny. Not funny, Ben. Still yeah, I know. I know. I want a divorce, Ben. Did he not make... We're having sex, so you can't divorce. <laughs> this is being recorded to put online. Oh, I told oh my gosh. It's not online. It just can't. <laughs> I hope there aren't any actually saved people listening to this recording. <laughs> did any not make? Um, did he not make them one with the portion of the spirit in, in their union? And what was the one God seeking? <laughs> Godly offspring. So guard yourselves in your spirit, and let none of you be faithless to the wife of your youth. For the man who does not love his wife but divorces her, says the Lord, says the Lord, the God of Israel, covers his garment with violence, says the Lord of hosts. So guard yourselves in your spirit and do not be faithless. The Lord hates divorce. Matthew 19. Matthew 19, verses 4 through 9 says this. He answered, Have you not read that, the, that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh? Real quick, I know a lot of people say it never says anything about the woman, ha woman having, to leave, having to leave her father and mother. That's because it was accepted in that society for the, that the woman just had to do that anyways. So if the Bible was written today, it's very probable that it would have said and the husband and the wife both have to leave their, their family and cleave to each other. Because that's the idea of the passage, what he's talking about anyways. So don't use your family as an out. When you marry someone, you need to cling to them or don't marry them. Because what happens is we start having authority problems because we try to still have our parents as our authority or the people that we're homeboys with while we're still mistreating our spouse. Leave your father and mother and cleave to your spouse. That doesn't mean you don't listen to them for advice. That doesn't mean that you're not on good terms with them. But that does mean that you don't put them before your spouse. And that's what that's a that's a father and mother's responsibility. That once their child gets married, they're supposed to hand it over. You're handing ownership of your child over to that spouse. See what I mean? That was that's your responsibility. That's why they ask who gives this this woman to be married, and the father says, "I do." That's why that is a thing. Is because he's transferring the authority over. That's why that's a why that's a wedding tradition. That's what it's about. So what happens is. I see it happen more with women than I do men, but sometimes men do it too. They keep the parents and the, and the, and the thing where, where they're making their financial decisions based off what the parents think. They're making their marital decisions based off what the parents think. They're making children decisions about their kids or their work based off what the parents think rather than what their spouse has to say. That's undermining your spouse's authority. That will end in a bad way. It always does. Um, so they are no longer two but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. They said to him, Why then did Moses command one, one to give a certificate of divorce and send, and send her away? See, you can see that what they're trying to say because of the words they chose to say. it. Why did Moses command him to do this? See what I mean? They're, they're trying to say, No, you're wrong. Divorce is okay. And, then, and that's why he comes back with this. He said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, 
Moses allowed you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. God never intended for people to get divorced. That's what he's saying. That was because you had hardness of heart. That's the only reason why divorce was allowed, because God saw that there was going to be problems, and so he gave you an out because of your foolishness. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife except for sexual immorality and marries another commits adultery. And I'm going to stop there. And obviously there's so much more I could say about all this stuff, but, I mean, we've already gone to 8.30, and not in small part because of Ben. <laughs> question of the week. How can the Old Testament apply to us? That is the question of the week. Any questions besides from Ben? No? We're good? <laughs>